Morning coach. Morning Robin. <laughs> so formal. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks coach for, for allowing me to interview you. And uh, you know, we've worked for a couple of teams now together. Um, this morning we're having some sort of a break. We've been on holiday. And uh, yeah, so I asked coach, uh, listen, um, can I interview you please? So nothing formal, very informal. You can see we are having some coffee uh, right here. Coach needs no introduction. Johnny Ferreira, he has been a legend in, in football. He is still a legend in football. We call him Johnny the first. First. The second and the third. Okay. <laughs> no, it's just a bit of a bit of a bit of Yeah, no. So, um, Coach, again, thank you so much for, for being on the RH7 Soccer Show. I have the honor and the privilege today to sit with you in this beautiful place. We were just chatting about it uh, earlier on. And, no, so, for me, firstly, I, I, I want to say thank you for the season, Coach. We don't always say it. Um, coaches that work with you, that get the privilege to work with you. It's, uh, it's been a great season for me personally and again learned a lot about you, how you do things, learned a lot about myself again and uh, I like doing um, self introspection always end of the seasons. Um, but this interview is about you. Um, I just want to hear from, from your side, uh, how did the season go? this year um, at Vendor Football Academy. That's where we were this season. Coach obviously was the head coach. I was the assistant coach assisting him with uh, Lurengo Ngomeni as the head scout it's as well. It's an honor for me to work with you. It's, um, I think it's the fourth club that you and I have been together with now. Uh, I, I think FC Cape Town, there was Polokwane City, there was um, uh, VFA, there was a club in between. But be that as it may, I've seen you travel the journey that you've uh, chosen. It's the journey that I chose many, many years ago. Um, and I've also been an assistant coach to some very smart guys. Clive Barker was one of them, uh, the guy at Sundowns in 96, Clements Westerhoff. So uh, coincidentally, both those head coaches at Sundowns and at Black Aces in 2015, i.e. Uh, Clements and Clive Barker, both of them won the AFCON trophy for their countries uh, in, I think it was in 94, Clements won his with Nigeria, Clive won ours in, in 96, if I'm not mistaken, with Bafana. So I was really privileged and the, um, I used to sit with those guys, I can remember clearly, sit with them for hours and hours at a coffee shop and move salt and pepper pots around the table, just discussing tactics. Um, and I've taken all of that uh, and of course molded my own personality around the football environment that I fell in love with and so passionately uh, can't get out of my system even at my age now, Rowan. But um, just going back to this season with Vendor Football Academy, um, very few people, and we both come with different personalities and, and rightly so, we don't want clones. We don't want, I don't anyway, we don't want clones. We don't want you to be another Johnny Ferrero. No, I don't want to be another Clive Barker. So we've, you know, you take all that information as, and every day that unfolds, um, uh, whether it's training, whether it's uh, uh, match analysis, whether it's video analysis, whether it's um, anything that goes to do with the running of a club on a daily basis, um, it unfolds in front of your eyes. And uh, as you know, if you keep your eyes and your ears open, you will see everything develop and evolve in front of you. And I think, and I do believe that you have followed those, that protocol. Um, and it's important that you take all that information on board as, as a coach, um, as an assistant coach, as a chief scout, Lovenga who works with us, take it on board. The secret or the magic to that is processing it in a positive, productive way. Um, and I know you're very, very hardworking, dedicated, diligent student of the game. And I, I must commend you. I must commend you 110% Rowan. Sometimes 
Um, it goes overboard and I, I can understand it. I respect it very, very much. But you're so passionate about pursuing your coaching career that many days I take a step backwards and I say, let this kid just do what he has to do. Let this guy, let this man, this young uh, coaching uh, future star, take all this information. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we have our, our, uh, our differences. That's going to be like that. That's going to be like that. I've never wanted to be 10, 15 years ago, Rowan, uh, maybe you weren't around then from a coaching point of view, but there was the common, the common theory that assistant coaches or ball boys uh, that, or cones, no, they go first, go fetch this, go fetch that. And I made a big decision long ago that whoever worked with me, um, he had to be smart enough and strong enough to take a training session if I was busy with another chore, with another uh, situation on another scenario in another field example, the assistant coach had to be as good and or smarter than me when he took uh, a squad of say 15 players when I was working with the first 15 players. Um, and I, I, I believe that when a head coach can sincerely, sincerely, say to his assistant coach, I want to do uh, pressing in the final third or possession with progression. And um, this assistant coach can go just like that. At the flick of a, uh, of a, of a big, at the spin of a coin, um, I wanted, I've always wanted the assistant coach to have that ability to do that. Um, and as I said to you, when we started Polo Kwani City nearly a year ago now, there was, and I'll just share it with the people that are that care to to, to watch and, and listen. Um, there was a, a situation where you and I were in the motor car traveling towards the training ground, and and I said, "Listen, Ron, last night I thought about something." Um, and he said, "He's amazing, John." He says, "I've already written it down." So the, the the mental telepathy that exists between the two of us is very very strong. Uh, we're both thinking uh, football all the time, and. Um, even this season with VFA, the um, you know, I think there's many times, many times where I've just I've got in the car and Rowan is a he's a an absolute stickler, meaning he's he's so um, persistent that you must have the training session, the day's training session planned the night before, um, and I love that. I love that. I don't do it, but. Um, I've got a different uh, formula. It's uh, neither wrong or right, but with Rowan, with his cafe license, he, he remains persistent that that plan, that daily plan must be uh, written down and rehearsed the following day. Be that as it may, uh, there was another situation this year with VNA, VFA where I said to him, listen, I want to do this, I want to do that. Um, and he will, he will, Rowan will show us how to implement it. And just like that, at the flick of a little bit, Rowan was able to implement a training session just like that, off the cuff. But clearly he's studied this along the way and um, he wouldn't do anything without first uh, checking on his, uh, his uh, study material.